be a short demonstration of our fixed asset solution for Dynamics GP. Our PanaTracker GP fixed asset solution uses Dynamics GP's fixed asset database as the hosted database. This provides a single point and a single place to maintain and manage your assets. We're going to be tracking the physical information about those assets. So in other words, who has them, who has it, where is it located? The transactions that we offer are going to be the ability to add new assets. So when you're adding a new asset, one of the things you'll want is asset tags. So your asset tags, what we recommend is getting pre-printed asset tags that you can then go ahead and affix to each asset and simply scan the barcode. This is going to be what we use from that point forward to do any updates and validations. So that asset tag is critical to our application interface. So adding the new assets, we can again up to, uh, create new asset records, uh, tag the assets and create those new asset records. Then we can update the asset as far as who has it, where is it located, and then complete a validation based on a specific location. So I'm going to just go through a couple of the features. One of them is going to be the add asset transaction. So you can see the interface that we utilize. It's very simple and very easy to use for the user. We have a lot of configuration settings, so you can tailor the information that would be captured um, for each of these various transactions. So for example, on adding a new asset, I can update or I can actually receive against a purchase order. So again, if you're using the Dynamics GP purchase order functionality to purchase your assets and you've marked them as capital items, those purchase orders would be available to also process and create the receiving transaction as well as creating that new asset record in Dynamics. If you don't have use if you're not using Dynamics GP, don't worry. These features can be simply turned off, in which case you actually will start with the short name um, as far as your data capture for the um, adding a new asset. Any field in our application does accept a barcode scan, and we also have associated lookups. You will see most fields will have an associated lookup available. So in this case, I can op look up my open purchase orders and the items that I have on that specific purchase orders that are marked as a um, capital line item. Uh, we will utilize this longer description or the description from the purchase order in this case uh, for the, the asset description. And I'm just going to actually pull over the asset record from Dynamics so we have um, our, the corresponding data that we can identify what we're capturing and where it's being captured in the Dynamics database. So as I mentioned, the description will come from the purchase order. If you're not using a purchase order and you start with the short name, the short name as you see is a lookup. It's not a lookup in Dynamics, but we've added the ability for you to set a list of short names that would be common assets that you would add and actually add a longer description. And in that case, we would use that longer description to populate the asset description to start out with. This in Dynamics can also be edited later on if need be. Because I'm using a purchase order, I'm actually going to skip my short name and that will bring me down to the asset class. And an asset class assignment, one of the things you'll need to determine is if the person adding these new assets, will they understand and know what the proper asset class assignment is? If not, one of the things that we recommend is to assign a, set up a class ID assignment that's simply identified as an unassigned or to be determined and have that defaulted for the user to, so that they don't need to make a selection or make a guess at what the proper selection is. So I've got mine set to unassigned where I can just simply hit the enter key to bypass um, to go ahead and select that. This brings us to again a couple different configuration settings. Asset ID is going to be something that actually you can have an asset ID that can be replicated with suffix numbers to identify the various records as they've been added. Um, also the asset ID and the asset label, again keeping in mind the asset label is what we use to scan to identify that asset record, um, can be the same value as it is in my asset record setup. So one of the configuration settings we have is the ability to scan it once to populate both. If you are having a specific asset ID numbering or naming convention, um, we can open that up so you can make the proper assignment in that field as well. I'm going to tag my asset and scan the barcode. Um, once it's barcoded, it's also identified as must be unique in the system, so we've already done that identification. And now I'm prompted for the serial number. So that could be the manufacturer's serial number that's potentially already barcoded for you. Um, it's not a required field, so if there's serial numbers that you don't have, you certainly don't have to put information into that field. 
Same thing with the model number. The model number, again, is a, a, a field that if you've got that additional information, you can enter it in or key it in. Um, otherwise, I can simply bypass it. Now, when you're adding an asset, the information that we basically need is going to be the asset class assignment, the asset ID, and some information about what that description is going to be. Outside of that, the rest of the data is going to be optional to assign at the time you're adding assets. So if I'm working in a specific location and my location identifies that area, I can actually have that defaulted for, for uh, the user. And so that might be the only information I capture. So for example, if I was receiving 100 laptops, um, I would receive them into my primary location and then as the second step, the update would then assign each of those laptops to a specific physical location and or a potentially the custodian assignment. So that information may be added as a part of the update. Also from this point forward, you do have configuration options of what information do you want to display for the user to capture. So if you don't ever want to have them assign physical location or structure or any of those that information at this point in time, it's not necessarily that you have that even presented for them. Now the data that you have available for options is going to be as follows. Um, as I said, physical information about the asset record. So we're going to be assigning anything basically below here. So it's going to be the location, physical location. Um, it would also be the structure ID as an option, custodian assignment, and a custodian doesn't have to be a user, an employee. It can be just like in Dynamics, you can enter in. It might be a customer ID, a vendor, or some other additional tracking that you're doing as far as a custodian. Um, also, it's going to be information. The acquisition date is going to be the date that's been added. The actual acquisition cost will be added at a later point in time. Again, we don't deal with the financial aspects of the, the uh, asset record from the handheld unit. We do also support the 15 user fields if you have those set up in Dynamics. So if you, based on how you've got those set up, those would also be displayed. If you have a corresponding lookup assigned, we would have a corresponding lookup again, how you, whatever you have set up um, matching up to your Dynamics database. If you have your field set as user field uh, with the, the uh, user field name, we assume you're not using it and it won't be displayed. So it will only be fields that you've edited and made changes to in Dynamics. So feel free to go ahead and use those fields. There's 15 of them that you can set up in both on the add and the update. We do take advantage of being able to populate that data as well. Now, if I was completed with this particular asset, I can go ahead and submit it. Um, and in this case, it's going to then confirm that I want to add this asset record. And you'll notice that I go right back to the asset label. The information I had populated at, uh, before that is already pre-assigned. So again, using the example of 100 laptops, the only information that's potentially going to be different when you're initially adding those in is going to be the asset label that you assign to it and the corresponding serial number. So we've added the functionality and the way to very easily add a large number of assets very quickly by setting up that first one and then using that the rest of that information as a default for the remainders, uh, remaining uh, remainders of those asset adds. If I was done with the, those, those, for example, those laptops, I can clear my defaults and then it will set my field back to uh, clear the original um, set fields. My system defaults will still remain intact so you don't have to worry about wiping those out. And then I can go ahead and go to my next purchase order or go to my next uh, asset that I'm going to be adding, group of assets that I'm going to be adding. Um, next, I'm going to go ahead and jump out of this transaction and just show you a real quick on the update. So even the assets that I just got done adding, I will be able to do an update. And also, um, now you'll notice that asset label. Again, once you have your assets barcoded, you're going to use that asset label to scan. That's how we're going to identify and pull up the current information about the asset. This is the one I just got done adding. If you recalled, I only had assigned it to the location Della field. And now I can go through and assign it to a physical location if I had physical location set up for that. Um, my custodian, again, can be an employee. Um, if you have employees, um, we can correspond and validate against that. If you're using this for other information, we can set the configuration settings so that that validation isn't going to be required against necessarily employee ID. 
Um, master asset is another one of those fields that you can assign. It can be an existing asset or again very similar to the master asset field in Dynamics. It can be used for other things. One good example of that is going to be um, perhaps you're not using Dynamics GP's purchase order system but you have an external purchase order system and maybe you want to have that as part of your reference. Um, master asset might be a very good way of, of also populating that information or give, getting that information or perhaps one of the user definable fields would be an option as well. Um, a master asset can also be tied with a, a number of other different ways that we can use that master asset. Um, if you're kind of curious on how to handle that with either components or um, if you're going to group assets together, that master asset ID can be uh, utilized. We do have a paper that does provide some additional information on using the master asset field um, for additional tracking functionality. So again, I have the ability to identify some additional information, and then when I submit this, it's going to update that asset record in Dynamics once everything has been synchronized back to Dynamics. And then we go to our validations, and our validation simply is going to be based on your physical location of your assets where you're going to be able to scan each of the assets to identify um, if, it's, if it's located there um, or if it's not. And uh, we can go into some more details on this. Uh, we want to keep this initial demo fairly short. Um, however, you want to see all the full functionality of the application, um, including how to use the associate asset, which does provide the ability for your existing assets if you do not have asset label assignments to make those assignments very simply and easily um, to those records and the asset query where you can just scan the asset and identify information about that asset record. So for recapping, keep in mind our solution is tracking the physical information about the assets. Who has it? Where is it located? It's going. You're going to be able to add new, uh, tag and add new assets, update the asset records, and complete validations against that, those assets. And again, everything is going to be tightly integrated as we're using Dynamics GP as your host database for tracking those assets. Thank you and please contact us for a, uh, to schedule a full demo of the application um, in more detail.